So you have your A-level biology paper 3 exam coming up. I'm going to tell you some things that I did for this exam that got me an A-star at the end in terms of the essay and the tips within that, but also within the rest of the paper and the things that you need to look out for for those questions as well. I'm going to go through all of that in this video. Trust me, it's going to be really, really useful. So I want you to stick around until the end. And I'm also going to leave some resources down below in the description too. So let's just get straight on with it. Let's just make it clear what you can find in this paper. So you have two sections within this paper. You've got the first section, which is just a couple questions across the whole biology specification. Now what AQA say is that these are more practical based and they're more to do with like analysis and application but genuinely revise everything one more time okay. Don't think that they won't ask you to simply state how something works because they can very well do that. This is just another excuse of a paper for them to ask you more questions because they definitely did not get to ask you everything within the first two papers So anything that they have left out in the previous papers will most likely come up in this one. So what I want you to do firstly is to open up the checklist again. So I'll leave some checklists down below in description and look at every single topic and just think to yourself have you gotten a question on this and if you haven't maybe it's going to come up this exam but I definitely want you to focus on it and don't be fooled in thinking that these are only application questions or they're only practical questions because literally in the 2023 paper there's a question where it simply asks you to state how the Piscinian corpuscles work in terms of how they generate the generator potential it's a three mark question as well so it's just literally a case of whether or not you know it or you don't okay that being said though Please go over your practicals for this paper. They're going to ask you questions based on the practicals. And now if you want to know how to revise these practicals, what I personally would recommend for you to do is to look at every single one of these practicals, find the methods for them, and really try and understand why they do every single step. I said this in the previous videos, I'm going to say in this one as well. Make sure that you know why they've done every single step within the method because they can ask you about any of them and ask you why have they done this. And if you don't know, then you don't know. Because in terms of what kind of questions they like to come up with, either they give you a method and they ask you to to write about certain areas of it or maybe they give you a method and they ask you what's wrong and they ask you to change something or something like that or they give you a graph or they give you a table or they give you something like that and you have to explain and make conclusions about the results. There is a Miss Estrick video about the practicals that I will leave down below in the description as well that definitely helped me in understanding how the practicals work and what kind of questions they like to come up with so definitely check that out if you're wondering about how the practicals and stuff work. In terms of my predictions and what can come up in this paper, I mean in paper one there were no evaluation questions. I don't know about paper two, so I think that this paper is going to have quite a few evaluation questions. Even if it's one or two, remember what I said in paper one and what kind of things I told you. So whenever you get an evaluation question, always look out for the stats test, always look out for the sample size, the time duration, any control variables are used, any standard deviation graphs, so that comes back to stats test. Anything like that you can really look out for and you can always get free marks on. So evaluation questions are quite common in this paper as well, so just be really clear with that especially if they haven't come up a lot previously they're very likely to come up now so go over that as well so that's what I'd say for the questions in this paper my main advice is that anything can still come up obviously it's going to be more towards the stuff that haven't come up yet but please go over that information one last time don't think it's only practicals because it's very unlikely to just be practicals. A lot of the times the practicals that they give you are practicals you've never seen before. They're based more on the topic rather than the practical itself. So they're basically asking you about the topic within that practical than actually focusing on like the methods and stuff if that makes sense. What you want more advice on is the essay. This is something that a lot of people struggle with because like you've taken biology, you've taken a content subject, a content heavy subject and you're doing an essay. Like what is the logic in that? I don't understand but I know a lot of you guys hate essays and that's why you've chosen biology and now you're doing essays. So but I'll tell you some things that helped me for this paper and for the essay itself because it's really really easy to do well in if you know what they're looking for. Okay firstly what should you be doing in terms of right now in terms of last minute what can you be doing to revise for the essay. I personally would recommend for you to look at every single essay there is and to make a plan on them. That's what you should be doing now. The difficult part is planning out what you're going to say for every single essay and what you'd write about. So I do not want you to write full essays, that's a waste of time. What I want you to do is sit there and plan out every single essay and I'll talk about how to do that now. So let's just look at the essays for last year and I'll try and give you some advice on how you should write these essays and the things that will help you get full marks or at least near full marks. I managed to crack it when I did an essay and I managed to get 24 out of 25. I'm not flexing, I'm just saying I managed to figure out what it is that they wanted from me and what kind of things I need to write about and how I need to write it. So in terms of the 2023 paper, which I'm looking 
looking at right now. The two essays that came up last year were the importance of interactions between organisms and their environment and the importance of membranes in the functioning of cells. Now the first thing I want you to do, okay, when you go into the exam is to look at the essays straight away. It's up to you whether or not you want to plan them and do them first or you want to leave it to the end, but I do want you to look at the essays. That's something I want you to do, so at least it's in your subconscious. So what I did was I went to the end of the paper for my exam and I saw the two essays and I had it in my mind and I did the rest of the paper and then I came back to the essays and I had more of an idea in what I was going to write about. So that's something I definitely recommend for you guys to do as well. Now in terms of writing the plan, the first thing I want to make clear is that you want to answer the question, okay? This is something that's really basic, but trust me, it's going to make sense what I'm talking about. So the importance of interactions between organisms and their environment. So that means we cannot talk about organelles because the most likely reason you don't get the marks that you want in an essay is that you're talking about irrelevant things. You can only talk about what the questions ask you to talk about. So we're talking about importance. When you write an essay about importance, you have to write about why something helps an organism to survive. That's what you want to do when you're talking about the importance. So for example, if we're talking about respiration, cool, something respires, that's nice. What's the point of respiration? Why is it important? The reason you respire Inspire is so you can produce ATP, okay? That's not it. You can't just stop at saying ATP. Now you have to say, why is ATP important? What is the point of ATP? ATP is an energy form used when, for example, you're contracting muscles. Why is it important that you contract muscles? Well, an organism needs to be able to do that to run away from their predators, for example. Now we've linked the idea of respiration to running away from a predator, which is the reason it's important because now it allows for the organism to survive. Do you see what I've done there? The point is that whenever you mention something, you have to show the examiner why that thing helps an organism survive. Now, let's go back to the questions that we have in the 2023 paper. It says here, between organisms and the environment, we have to be really clear in answering the question, only the question. So if you talk about anything within an organism, you're not gonna get any marks. You have to talk about stuff between organisms and the environment. So you have to talk about it outside of the organism. Whereas the second question here, the importance of membranes in the functioning of cells. You can only talk about membranes when you're regarding them to cells. Sometimes they say something specific like that and you might not pick up on it and then you end up losing marks just because you talked about something irrelevant. Now, in terms of how you plan out your essay, the most important thing that you wanna do is to hit as many topic areas as you can within the whole specification. So for AQA, you have eight different topics from topic Topic one, which is biological molecules, all the way to topic eight, which I forgot the name of. You need to basically tick off as many topics as possible. So let's go back to our example of membrane. A very obvious place that you could start within this topic is the idea of the resting potential caused by the cell membranes in neurons. This is topic six. Throughout your essay, you need to be able to write about at least four out of the eight topics. That's what my idea of a good essay was. I'd have to write about at least four of the different eight topics that there are. So I'd have to hit as many of them as I could somehow. How. Okay, at least four out of eight. So in terms of what I'd write about, once again, whenever you talk about something, you have to link it back to the idea of survival, the reason it's important. So if you're talking about how a resting potential is maintained, leading on to action potentials, the reason they're important is, for example, in like the reflex arc to prevent you from touching a hot surface. Whenever you're writing about stuff like this, you have to always bring in as many A-level detail as you can. So simply talking about cell membranes, simply talking about neurons isn't enough. You have to really talk about the idea of the sodium potassium pump, talking about depolarization all of these words you have to mention because you want to make it as A level as possible. You're really trying to differentiate it from something you would have written at GCSE. That's the second point I want you to make clear as well. Not only do you want to try and talk about importance as much as you can, you want to also make it as detailed as possible. You want to bring in as much A level stuff as possible. Now, a lot of people always talk about whether or not they need to know out of spec information. So like learning random facts from like uni, for example, things like that, just so you can get full marks. I personally wouldn't recommend it just because the majority of the time when I've seen people do this, they memorize stuff that they don't need to know and they forget to put in actual A-level stuff. The A-level stuff is going to help you get at least 20 out of 25. If you genuinely have a perfect essay and the only thing you're missing is out of spec information, you're going to be capped at 23 out of 25. 23 is a crazy good score. Genuinely, you should be more than happy with 23. You shouldn't really worry about out of spec information. That's not going to help you. It's going to be making sure you write everything in enough detail, make it relevant that will help you get at least 20 out of 25. So I definitely wouldn't recommend for you to learn out of spec information just because it's more likely going to be 
classed off as irrelevant then it is actually going to help your essay so only put it in if it really links with what you're talking about but apart from that it's just I would say it's a waste of time learning it because you don't know what's going to come up if you are learning something out of spec make it something generic so like for example to do with proteins and enzymes because enzymes comes up always somehow so or like to do with membranes and I will leave some essay question examples from all the previous years down below in the description as well so you can really get as much planning practice as possible right so anyways going back to our example of cell membranes talking about how you plan an essay for this. We've talked about topic six. The next topic that I can bring in here is obviously topic two. Is it topic two or topic one? Topic two is cell structure. It's literally got an entire subtopic on transport across cell membranes. So you can bring that topic along as well. Technically, you can merge that with topic six because any mention about cell membranes automatically ticks off topic two. So that's one that you can just do straight away. Another topic area that you can bring in within this one is photosynthesis and respiration. Because remember with this question, we're not just talking about these cell surface membranes. We could also be talking about the membranes of chloroplasts, for example, or mitochondria so you can bring in these topics as well and once again you can talk about survival in that sense as well because another thing you want to do you're really trying to bring in as much diversity within your essay as possible so don't just talk about animals talk about plants as well so within plants you talk about photosynthesis you talk about the importance of the membranes you find for photosynthesis and then you talk about how that's important why is it important for a plant to do photosynthesis and etc and the rest should be easy for you to explain now but what I want you to do is with these type of questions is try and figure out as many different areas of the specification that you can bring in and bring in as many of them as you can. You could also talk about skeletal muscles and talk about the membranes found within that and the actin myosin stuff whatever. You can talk about like the calcium ion channels and things like that but you don't need to because we've already done a topic six topic right so you only want to focus on doing one topic at a time and hopefully with that you get as much breadth as you need across the specification that you end up getting a good enough score. All I want you to do is make sure you plan as many of these essays as you can and you do the same structure for all of them. I just want to say good luck for both the essay and the rest of the questions and for every single one of these plans look at the mark schemes and see the list of things that you could have potentially talked about and how you can make it relevant towards the essay question itself. Good luck for this exam and see you very soon.